Telmo and Tula. We are the Raspberry Brothers. Raspberry? Not Raspberry, Telmo. Cooks. We are cooks. Oh, yeah. I got confused because we went to the forest today, and Tula and I are going to prepare a delicious fruit salad. So I was thinking about the strawberries, the blackberries, the raspberries, and as Telmo was saying, we are going to be making a fresh fruit salad of forest fruits. Uh, Tula, it's better to say it like this. <clears throat> a delicious fruit salad of forest fruits. That way is better. We need to introduce our fruit friends the right way. They are very important because they can keep us healthy, and aside from that, they're delicious. Well, all right, you have a point. Paper and pencil, Telmo. Oh, yeah. Paper and pencil. Ready? In order to make a fruit salad of forest fruits, we are going to need strawberries. Cherries. Raspberries. Gooseberries. Blackberries, sugar, and oranges. Let's begin. First of all, before we do anything else, we need to wash the fruits. Because even though they look clean, we always need to wash them before we eat them. I'll put them under the water so that they can soak. And later, I will drain them. First, the strawberries, which are my favorite. Mmm, I love strawberries. These strawberries are different to the big strawberries that you often find in supermarkets. If you look closely, these strawberries are much smaller. But that doesn't mean they're less delicious. All right, the strawberries have been washed now. Now we're going to put the cherries in. Let me tell you a little bit about where cherries come from. That way, they'll taste a lot better. Cherries come from the cherry tree. The cherry tree is a very beautiful tree. Be careful when you stick a cherry in your mouth to eat it because it has a pit. Don't eat the pits. <laughs> Look at my earrings. Tula, later on we're gonna have to eat your earring cherries. All right, let's go get the blackberries. Oh, blackberries. My friends, be careful not to get stained by the blackberries because when they are very ripe, they stain you a lot. 
That doesn't scare me, Talmo. Oh, darn it. Ah! That doesn't scare me, Talmo. Oh, darn it. Wild blackberries are also very beautiful, but be careful when you pick them because they will pinch you. Ow! <laughs> the blackberries are ready. Now it's time for the gooseberries. Gooseberries are like very small red grapes that are very beautiful. You can do many things with gooseberries. There's gooseberry syrup, gooseberry jelly, gooseberry ice cream. Mmm. Ah! If you keep that up, we won't have any blackberries for the fruit salad. Oh. Go on, clean your face. And now, the raspberries. You like strawberries, but I happen to like raspberries most of all. They are very beautiful and delicious. When I'm walking in the forest and I come upon a raspberry shrub, it's like magic. Be careful not to eat too many of them at once because they will make you feel sick. We have washed all the fruits now. We'll put all of them in a bowl and we'll mix them up well. I'll start squeezing the oranges that our adult has already cut up for us. All right. I'll go squeeze the oranges. So we can make a fruit salad that is very nice and tasty and yummy. So yummy. It's going to be beautiful. But a pop bum This is ready now. This is almost ready. Now we just need to sprinkle a little bit of sugar on it. Put a lot on there. No, Talmo. Fruits are already very sweet. We'll just put a few spoonfuls to make them a little bit sweeter and that's it. Well... I'll put the orange juice over the top so that it can blend with the sugar and the fruits of the forest will absorb it well. And now to the fridge. Oh, we forgot the pepper, Tula. No, Talmo. Come on, Tula, just a little bit won't hurt. Talmo, if you want, when you put it on your plate, you can add some pepper, but not now. I don't like a fruit salad of forest fruits with pepper. All right. We need to put it in the fridge. But to do that, we're going to need the help from our grown-up because we can't do it on our own. Grown-up! Can you please put the fruit salad of fresh forest fruits in the fridge for us, please? We will leave the fruit salad in the fridge for one hour so that they're deliciously cold. And now, let's go back over the recipe. Strawberries, cherries, raspberries, gooseberries, blackberries, one spoon of sugar, and orange juice. Now let's eat. This fruit salad of fresh forest fruits is delicious! <laughs> you want some? No, thank you. <laughs> Telmo, you look like a tomato. <laughs> oh, darn it. Let's go! Electric current. Welcome to Atomic Chip. Holy moly! Is this where you live? Yes, it's the biggest city in the microworld. So many colors! They represent the different groups of elements. Look, Chip, there's the governor's palace. And this is.
is Governor Phosphorus. Hmm. Don't be scared. He's real friendly. Now then, you say you're a child, a human. I mean that you're not an element from this world. You don't know how you got here or where you are, and you want us to help you get back to your home. Uh, yeah. Give him uh -huh. the once over, Dr. Yacht. Hmm. Hmm. At first glance, he's lacking an electronic field and atomic mass. He's not an atom, but Ow. I can't tell you what he is. But I already told you I'm not from here. I arrived the beam. in a... Huh? The beam, I found it. Yeah, I arrived in a kind of beam. I found the area where the beam landed. There were two of them. Of course, the other beam. Why didn't I think of that? Another human came with me when I was in the beam and... Excuse uh... me, Governor. I'm sorry to interrupt, but maybe the other human knows something that we don't. Maybe so. Well, then, we gotta find him. <laughs> That's great. I volunteered to look for him with Chip. Good thinking, Merc. I'll go along with Hydro and... Um... Me? <laughs> hmm. Uh? Looks like you're coming, too. Right, then. There's no time to lose. Scraps, pass the next load of atoms through the machines. The matter transmuter, quickly! Throw him in. At your service, great master. Good, loyal, just as it should be. These armor suits will protect you from contact with the material. Uh, sir, yes, sir. Yes, it works. Now you don't have to be scared to come into contact with the material. <laughs> I don't know what you have in mind, but I'm not afraid of you. Hmm, interesting fine specimen. My name is Natit, sir, at your service. Perfect. Disciplined, valiant, and loyal. Just what I was looking for. I appoint you general of the anti-material forces. You'll direct my soldiers. Sir, yes, sir. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! This is just like my skateboard, but it's way cooler! Man, it's hot! This is the river of electrical current. They say it crosses the whole of Microworld. Oh, wow. What could that be in the distance? I haven't the faintest idea. Let's go investigate. Let's go! Visitors? Intruders? Uh, enemies! Uh, uh, I gotta warn Dr. No! Uh, uh, uh. As you can see, according to my plans... Sir, sir, it's the enemy! The enemy? Yes, sir, the enemy! But who is the enemy? I don't know, but someone's coming. Capture more atoms for my army. <laughs> we must finish building the Black Tower. So all of this is new, then? This wasn't here before. We should ask them what they know. Halt! In uh, the name of Dr. No! Careful, Hydro! Why are they attacking us? I don't know. Let's split up. Ah! Ah! They got me. Ah! I'm fine. Ah! Don't worry. I'll come back for you. Hurry up. <sighs> You're going to get it. <laughs> yeah. Atomic team one, bad guy hey. zero. Let's go and help Hydra and Ferric. Do you mind not squishing me so tight? What would you hey. like me to do, Nene? Hydra, Ferric, Hydra, you guys okay? Ground? Huh. Come on, let's land and we can do the rest on foot. There it is. Whoever just attacked us came from over there. What could it be? Don't know, Ferric, but let's go and find out. And how are we going to avoid those strange atoms? They look dangerous. Maybe they've got the other human held prisoner. That's true. We better get out of here. Don't be a sissy, Gasball. I've got it. Plan A, Operation Camouflage. I assure you that I'm specialized in detection of enemies. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, careful, I'm delicate. What manners. Whoa, so many levers. What's this for? Whoa, that's so cool. We're doing great. Carry on. Uh, where did that box come from? Uh, 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 oh, I think 
in the gut bit oh. of my Let's get out of here. I, 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 Who put this photonic welder here? I'll give that useless piece of junk what for when I see him. Look, oh. there's the other human. It's huge. We better get out of here. Don't even oh. think about it. Shh. Ah, my great masterpiece, my particle accelerator. Once it's finished and I can add the lens to it, I can accomplish my plans and go back home to show the world who the great Dr. Now really is. <laughs> go back home? The lens? It was next to me when I got here. I'll give it back to him. Listen, Chip, I don't think this human is a prisoner. Something here smells really fishy to me. It's about time, Scraps. Where were you hiding? Let's see if you can operate the machinery correctly, you pathetic bag of bolts. Huh? That's the boy who stole my lens! My lens! The pièce de résistance of my plans! With that and the accelerator finished, I can convert all the atoms into antimatter and dominate the world! Piece of junk, go and raise the alarm! Capture them! Let's get out of here. But he's the only one who can get me home, Merc. He's not good to help you, Chip. The only thing he wants is to recover his lens and make slaves out of all of us. We can't let him get away with what he wants. If he gets his lens back, we're all finished. <laughs> huh? What was that? There he is. Capture that little brat and get my lens from him now! Quick! To the box! Before they catch us! Come on, hurry up! This is really hard. Uh, 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 Oops, I'm sorry. Oh, I feel uh, sick. We gotta get out of here. Uh, uh, we're very high up. Uh, and this button? Uh, 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 Captures the enemy. Don't let him escape. The enemy? Uh, what a pad. Uh, capture the enemy! Run! Give me the plan, Chip! I got an idea! Go on, I'll get you up! There are the flying boards! Get those now, and let's run towards the electrical current. If I'm not mistaken, there'll be a bridge over there that crosses it. There it is! Wait, it doesn't look very stable. We'll have to risk it. You see? Oh. 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 I think we better turn back. Halt, Mr. Enemy! In the name of Dr. No! I can see it now, my pretty one. With this lens, will rule the whole world, and these idiots will have no other option than to recognize my genius. We're down for! What's happening? I can't seem to move! Uh-oh. Uh -oh. uh -oh. uh -oh. uh -oh. Hold on tight! If we fall, the current will take us to the other end of Microworld! Hey! He's escaping! The enemy is escaping! And I can't even move! Still in one piece. Oh, my head! Oh, what's that? It's Lara's book! Huh? Huh? What are you talking about, Chip? 
It's a school book. It talks about your world. Oh, does it mention me? Yeah, and Hydro and Merc. Wow, that's marvelous. Does that book say how to get back to Tamika because we've ended up a long way from there? Nah, I don't think so. We're not going back to Atomica yet. Come on, everybody. We've got to find the Black Tower. You're right, Merc. We've got to stop that Dr. No before he carries out his evil plans. Let's get back on the road. We're a long way away. Going to the Black Tower doesn't seem like such a good idea. You're always such a sissy. Pathetic incompetent fool! Now! <sighs> How could you possibly be so useless? He's just a little brat! How could you let him escape? Uh, uh, uh. Yoo hoo, a uh, little help around here? Hello? Hello, all my little friends. Hello! Hello, Lucio. Aha, gotcha. That Lucio, he's always joking. But today's subject is very important. And we should pay special attention. Do you know what the first thing that you have to do when you get in the car is? Put on our seatbelts! Put on our seatbelts! Yes, very good. And now, I'm going to draw one. Although it is something that you know already. The seatbelt crosses over your chest and should be pressed into its fastener until you hear a click. Never just put it on any way that you want, okay? You always have to hear the click, as only then it is well fastened. Isn't that right, Lucille? That is how you should do it. And remind those who travel with you too. In the car, everyone should wear their seatbelts well fastened. In case of an accident or sudden braking, it will prevent serious knocks and bumps, like the one Victor had. Let's take a look. Victor's father thought that nothing would ever happen to him, and he never wore his seatbelt. Victor, as always, was playing. And although he was wearing his seatbelt, it wasn't fastened properly, as his father had never worried about showing him how he should do it. They had both had a short journey, and everything had gone well. But when they entered the city... Careful! The old lady! And them, what a bang. Because Victor had his seatbelt on badly, he ended up face down and with several bumps. And his father had even more. But he could have gone through the windscreen and, well, that could have been terrible. That's right, Lucio. It could have been a lot worse. And it's better not to see it. So never forget, when you go in the car, always wear... Your seatbelt! Belt. Because you never know when something unexpected is going to happen. Like what happened to Carla's mother. She always wore her seatbelt. And she also always made sure that Carla wore hers properly, too. She always made sure that it went flip. Careful! The bus! Do 
You see? It is always possible that something dangerous might happen, but the seatbelt prevented them from being harmed. That is why it is so important to wear your seatbelt well fastened, like Carla and her mother, who, by the way, deserve. Green light, Lucio! Well, that's all for today, my little friends. And remember to avoid a nasty bum. Make it clean with Make your seatbelt. Seat with your seatbelt. Goodbye now. Goodbye. sé lo que hago. No digas nada. Empecemos con la manualidad de hoy. De acuerdo. Pongo el salvapantallas y empezamos. ¡Hola, amigos! La manualidad de hoy es muy fácil y queda muy bonita. Sí. Dinosaurios multicolor. No exactamente, Telmo. Son botellas multicolor. Ah, bueno, no importa. También será divertido. Vamos a ver los materiales que nos hacen falta. Una botella de vidrio transparente con tapón. Sal refinada. Tizas de color. Cuatro vasitos o recipientes pequeños. Papel de lija fino. Una hoja de papel. Tinta adhesiva. Y unas tijeras. Vamos a empezar. Llenamos de sal los vasitos hasta la mitad. Escogemos cuatro tizas de colores diferentes y las rayamos con el papel de lija. Un color diferente en cada uno. Mezclamos la tiza con la sal. Espera, no empieces. Haré un truco de magia. ¿Así? ¡Qué bien! Voy a utilizar tres vasitos de los que tenemos. ¿Lo ves? Están los tres vacíos. Nada por aquí, nada por allá. Los pongo en fila boca abajo encima de la mesa. Ahora rompo un trocito de tiza y lo pongo en el de en medio. Voy a mover los vasitos sin levantarlos de la mesa y tú tienes que adivinar dónde está la tiza. ¿Y dónde está la magia? En que mis manos serán más rápidas que tu vista y no sabrás dónde está la tiza. Imposible. Mi vista es más rápida que los relámpagos. Vamos a hacer uno de prueba. Movemos el del centro a la izquierda, lo cambiamos por el de la derecha. Otro cambio. Ahora este para aquí, este otro para allá, este lo volvemos a poner en el centro y ya está. Dime, Telmo, ¿dónde está la tiza? Está aquí. 
estoy seguro. ¿Estás seguro? Pues levanta el vaso tú mismo. Anda, no está. Bueno, era una prueba. A que no lo repites. Esta vez utilizaré mis superpoderes para adivinarlo. De acuerdo, porque ahora lo voy a hacer rapidísimo. ¿Preparado, Telmo? Super preparado. Bueno, Telmo, tú dirás. Super Telmo dice que está en el vaso del centro. ¡Ah! Has perdido. La tita está aquí, ¿ves? ¡Ay! ¿Dónde debe de estar? No sé qué ha podido pasar. Vamos a continuar con la manualidad. Voy a llenar los vasitos de sal. Pues yo iré poniendo los colores. Ya tenemos los vasos con los cuatro colores preparados. Ahora vamos a ver cuál es el próximo paso. Construimos un embudo con una hoja de papel para poder echar la sal dentro de la botella. Enrollando la hoja como si hiciéramos un cucurucho. Ponemos un poco de cinta adhesiva para que no se nos deshaga. Eso está chupado. ¿Me dejas hacer el embudo a mí? Claro, yo corto un poco de cinta. ¿Me pasas un trocito de cinta adhesiva? Sí, toma. Cuidado que no se te doble. Telmo, ¿Eh? <risa> 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 lo tienes en la nariz. ¿Cómo he ido a parar aquí? Da igual, este ya no sirve. Tíralo, que te daré otro. Vale, gracias. <risa> <risa> Aguanta el embudo con las dos manos y yo coloco la cinta adhesiva. Vale, buena idea. Ahora solo nos falta la última parte de la manualidad. Ha llegado la hora de rellenar la botella. Echamos un poco de cada color formando capas. Inclinamos un poco la botella cada vez que añadimos una capa para que no queden todas iguales. Ponemos capas de colores hasta llenar la botella del todo. Tapamos la botella con el corcho o el tapón. Esta es la parte más divertida. Telmo, tú escoges un color y yo otro. Y vamos llenando la botella. ¡Yo tapo! ¡Que no estáis sorda! Este embudo es genial como altavoz. Voy a hacer una prueba. ¡Adulto! Perdona, adulto, estaba probando mi super altavoz. Como las sandías de mi jardín. ¡Ha quedado genial! Y existen mil combinaciones de colores y formas. Y se pueden escoger diferentes tipos de botellas. ¡Hasta, Hasta pronto, pronto, amiguitos!
The Cloud Castle. When sun heats water from seas, rivers, lakes, part of it evaporates, turning into millions of tiny, invisible droplets, which are so light they rise up in the sky. And when all these tiny droplets ascending reach cooler air, they all join together, forming slightly larger drops, which are suddenly visible in what we know as clouds. No need to speed up, Nimbus. We're only out for a stroll. <laughs> this is just like riding a wild horse. Sorry, Doc. There's not much I can do to avoid turbulence. Oh, this is fun. Can you shape yourself into a rodeo horse? How's this? Hold on tight, cowboys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Watch out and hold on. Remember, the ground is far away. Yes, <laughs> the ground. Yoo-hoo! Ooh! Ooh! Help! Nimbus! <laughs> Frosty, it's okay. I'm coming to save you. Dear me, I was close to turning into crust ice there. Sorry, Frosty. But I might have overexcited myself being a stallion. <laughs> You're not a skilled rider. Oh. Well, I think I did quite well, considering it was my first rodeo. <laughs> Your first one, and nearly the last one, too. I wonder what happened to Flo and Dopey. We saw them fly up into the sky, running in circles inside a whirlwind. Hey, they must feel pretty dizzy by now. I wonder where they ended up. Poor guys. I just hope they had a soft landing. We spun around more times than a water wheel. I'm glad all that's over. Where are we? You're up in the clouds, Dopey. <laughs> uh, what are we up here for? <laughs> As usual, Dopey, you're living in a cloud. Wow. We're too far for the ground. You're right. We're on a cloud. <laughs> Watch out, you nutcase! Why are you picking on me? What did I... Ah! Flu? Where did you go? Flu! Huh? Die! Ah, help me! Flu! Help me! I'm falling! <laughs> that was close. I thought you wouldn't reach me in time. It's safer to keep in the centre. Walking around the rim is dangerous. You'd better stop walking or you'll fall off the other end. That guy's a loony. He needs constant watching. It's very kind of you clouds to help control the planet's climate. During the day, we're just like huge parasols, protecting the Earth from the sun. Go on, Nimbus. Shape yourself into a parasol. Hey, guys, forget it, OK? I had enough of this horse ride. Are you? Here oh! I go. Now I'm really going to bite the dust. Uh-oh. Looks like I'm coming with you. Ah! What do you think of this parasol? Nice and fresh. You're a genius, Nimbus. And now, give us a new shape. Hey, guys. I'm a flight <laughs> This is more or less what clouds do at night. Clouds cover the Earth with a blanket to stop the heat escaping into the sky. Hey, guys. Check that cloud out. Looks like a lamb. Well, now our little lamb looks more like a fried egg. <laughs> and that one over there looks like an old truck. And has suddenly been junked. It's the wind who's responsible for shaping clouds, changing them constantly. Well, that cloud castle over there has been around for some time now. Hey, guys, that's the cloud observatory. Weather report drops are working there. Let's go there. I've always wanted to see how they work inside. It looks pretty gloomy to me. Fasten your seat belts, guys. We'll be landing very soon. You mean clouding. Land or cloud, but do it gently, please. Don't worry, Frosty. Nimbus is an experienced genius. <laughs> oh! ah! You're hopeless. Where did you get your pilot's license? In a fortune cookie? Ho, ho, ho. Sorry, guys. Nimbus, <clears throat> I think they're all speaking about your family. What? Oh, yes. Look, guys. They're all there. Look. There are the stratus clouds, which always travel low. You mean the ones that hide mountains and settle on the sea? Yes, that's them. And those are cumulus. They are usually round-shaped and 
and as white as cotton balls. <laughs> hey, Nimbus, you're tickling me. <laughs> what a surprise, Cumulus. I thought you were just a drawing. No, we're here as samples for visitors to study. And you can't leave the board? No. Well, yes, when someone comes to visit us, like you now, we can perform for you. Look, cumulus are born small, and with regular supply of evaporated water, we grow larger and larger, until we turn into cumulus nimbus. Wow, that's incredible. You clouds are amazing. And what do you call those thin clouds you have over your head? Cirrus. These dare into extreme heights where temperatures are freezing, and that's why they're formed by ice crystals. Hi, pal. I'm also frozen. It's as cold as the North Pole up there. <laughs> We're nice, cool guys, aren't we? Did you enjoy the presentation? That was great. Thank you. I don't want to sound prejudiced, <laughs> but my family has always been artistic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must get back to the Cirrus. Down here, I would melt fast. Bye, guys. Bye, Chris. We must also leave now. We want to visit the observatory and meet the scientists. Follow those steps and you'll reach the entrance. Looks like we have visitors. Anyone would say cloud tourism is fashionable? Maybe. Nowadays, clouds have many new friends. Ooh, these boys look nice. The only one I cannot trust is Flu. You can tell he has wicked intentions. We better keep an eye on him. You never know what he's capable of. Let's take a look at what he's up to right now. I wish there was a big storm and we'd have some <laughs> heavy rain. What do you need a storm for? If it rains, I'll be able to mix myself with water drops and back on the ground, continue polluting. Will you ever think of something else? I prefer having a good time. How about this for a good time? <laughs> and keep still for a while, or I'll cloud you up again. I'm not in the mood for games. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think that... Uh, what? What is it? The party's over. The uh, problems have just started. Crikey! Where did these come from? Did they also get in with the whirlwind? These guys shouldn't be here. This cloud belongs to us. Seize the intruders! Intruders! Flu? What are these guys up to? They look savage to me. Don't worry, they're only electric particles. Clouds are full of them, but they're harmless. Against a wicked polluting germ like me. Oh my god, a polluting germ. That flu is bad news. He could pollute the entire cloud. We must do something to stop him. Best thing that could happen is a storm, as he's already said. And he would be back on the ground before polluting our cloud. No, we must avoid that. If he falls on farmland, he can make huge damage polluting lettuce and tomatoes. And whoever eats them will be sick. And if he falls in a well, he will poison the water. And those who drink it will also be sick. Wherever he falls, he'll do harm. That's all he wants to do. If that's the case, we'll stop him. But who are you? And what are you doing on this cloud? I'm Raindrop. Frosty. And Nimbus. And you, of course, must be responsible for this observatory. Oh, you've heard about us. I always thought the rest of the world ignored our existence. Well, only in rumors. You're some kind of scientists or cloud masters, true? You're here to observe how clouds develop. Yes. From up here, we have a great chance of watching from the most humble cloud to the largest one. Well, storms develop all around us and burst with thunder and lightning. Whoa! Hey, why are you attacking Frosty? Not your best day so far, eh? I'm so sorry. Sometimes we can't hold discharging. Inside clouds, we're full of electricity. Well, you should take greater care. You nearly melted my friend here. What a brute! He nearly fused me! And what are we going to do with Flu? I wish he would never get back to Earth. Yeah. Couldn't you lock him in a dark cloud somewhere? Clouds always return to the ground what they pick up. A lightweight Flu was sent up here inside a whirlwind. But when a hurricane wind or a tornado blows, we've even had fish and frogs reach us up here. And we can't hold up here everything. It's unreasonable. Anything that reaches us due to wind and evaporation goes back down again with rain. But flu can be really dangerous down there. 
No need to worry right now. He's been taken care of, along with his friend in a cloud dungeon. Flu, this hairy, sticky guy is a pain. He can't stop licking me. Of course, you're an alcohol drop, and he's... I'm drunk. I am. A drunken iron. Incredible. What we live to see. I never thought an iron could end up drunk. What is an iron? I told you already. They are electric particles. The air is full of them, and they gather in clouds. The positive and negative ions live together in clouds. Many live here in peace oh. until uh, positive and negative ions get cross. You said positive ion? Whoa! Yes, a positive ion. <laughs> Head of the positive ions. A very positive guy. <laughs> this ion's getting on my nerves. A negative ion? is the head of the negative ions, I suppose. Exactly. Bingo. <laughs> and what happens when they get cross? Uh, well, you see, positive ion marches with all the positive ions to the top of the cloud. <laughs> I understand now. And negative ion gathers his negative troops in the bottom of the cloud. True? Exactly. <laughs> Bingo. And why do they get angry at each other? What's all that about? Nobody knows. It's never the same reason. But as soon as they clash, <laughs> lightning and thunder, big storms. You are the real storm here. Go and try flu for a change, OK? Ew, what a sticky, painful dude. <laughs> My God, you're horrible. This guy tastes like a cow pat. I'll have to clean my tongue with a Brillo pad. I must get those two troop leaders into a fight. <laughs> that means war and a storm. <laughs> See? Flo can only think of doing harm. It's his wicked nature. Yes, Raindrop, you're absolutely right. But I fear there's not much we can do to change that. Cloud's duties are to control the climate and distribute water throughout the world. Sooner or later, a storm will break and flu will reach the ground with the rain. Rain is needed everywhere. It waters fields and keeps rivers flowing. Without rain, the world would soon become a desert. You must accept it, Raindrop. There's nothing we can do. Rain forms part of the natural cycle of water. I understand. But I wish I could stop pollution. Pollution is not our fault. On the contrary, we're always fighting pollution. And although flu is dangerous, humans are even worse. They even pollute our clouds and the whole sky with toxic gas from their cars, industries, and debris. Human pollution has even reached the ice on the poles. They must do something about it soon or the Earth will be polluted and agonizing. All that is true, but for now, our biggest problem is called flu. What a country. Always cloudy. So, Captain, who are these two chaps you have detained here? These two came up here on a whirlwind. Prisoners, attention! Attention! So you're the positive, positive ion, better known as the largest coward in the cloud. Silence, imbecile! Imbecile! And you! And you! Must you repeat everything I say? I say? Shut up, you hear me? Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! Who said that? I'm the largest coward on this cloud. Who has dared make such assumptions? Oh, well, everybody's talking about it. I understand it was uh, Negative Iron who first mentioned it. Bloody Negative, Negative Iron. How dare he? He is the actual coward of this cloud. This is war. <laughs> <laughs> I did it! The party's about to start! <laughs> Blue gets away with murder. He managed to make Positivian mad. Will the storm break? That's the result of an ion war. Their battles result in storms. Follow us and you'll see what actually goes on inside the cloud. It's the cloud map, and it looks alive! Yes, look carefully. 
Positive ions are moving to the top end of the cloud, and negative ions to the bottom end. That means the power difference between both ends of the cloud is growing. And nothing can stop sparks from jumping and starting a storm. Positivian is up here? And the other large circle is Negativian? Effect Tivoli. Hey, he's just like Drunken! And without <laughs> Dopey's assistance. <laughs> oh. Brave negative ions. I've just received some late news which I believe is going to surprise you. A storm is about to break out. Hey, what a surprise. Same stuff again. Once again, we must leave the positive ions. What were you expecting? Inviting them out dancing? Well, that would be better. Anyhow, we will reunite once the storm's over. Well, what I need is some time off. Silence! All go to your assigned places. Positive Iron has charged the North with his troops. You will charge them south, negatively. OK, troops, march! Ions are taking sides fast. We will soon notice the charges. Poor Ions. They'll grind each other, and all for a stupid... It's Flu's fault. He either hurts or makes others hurt each other. Battles are stupid. I just can't understand people who fight. Oh, don't worry, Raindrop. This is not really a battle. It's just an electrical process which helps rainfall. Ready, everyone? The cloud is already polarized. Which means the top end of the cloud is a completely opposite charge to the bottom end. Discharges are inevitable now. The ions should be ready to perform by now. Following Positivian's orders, we will charge and discharge. Discharge! I expect you all to accomplish your mission. You have been thoroughly trained for this. It's time to show it. Show it! All set for the charge. Hold your positions. Positions! Wait for the signal. Thunder and lightning! Thunder and lightning! Hold your positions! Wait for the signal! <laughs> the storm has started! Huge crowds clash, heavily charged, sparks and thumps, causing a storm with thunder and lightning. The rumble is frightening. Another thunderbolt will soon be born. <laughs> Clash, thunder and lightning. Black sky above us is lit with a flash. Powerful thunderbolts. Super electrified. And now we're ready to soak the ground. Raindrops, raindrops falling from the sky on the ground. It's hot, big drops fall. And when it's cold, the snowflakes drop in the storms. There's no tricks or magic. It's all electricity. Raindrops, raindrops falling from the sky on the ground and in the seas. Raindrops, good for crops. Raindrops, good for all. Nice big rainbow will feed us all. Raindrops satisfy the plants. Thirst we can't allow. Deserts to exist. They need water from us. Clouds if we want the planet to be full of be able to pollute. I want to fall in a cornfield and pollute all the flour they make with it. Oh! Come to me. It's 
Oh my, what do you mean it's not high? It's high and it stinks. Please be a friend. Control your speed and fall on a soft surface. Don't you want to jump off with your colleagues, Raindrop? Well, I've never rained before. Well, I'm going to love this. I'm jumping first. Don't you remember how scared you were the last time? You're made of ice and you would break up into pieces when you hit the ground. Gosh, I hadn't thought about that. To see so many drops jumping off, I guess it made me envious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a drop of water must go through that experience, huh? I'm going to jump. It could be fun. It's a shame Flu also jumped. He surely must be polluting some pretty flower by now. Or the crystal clear water from a stream. Who knows? We might be lucky, and he's fallen into some deep crevice from which he can't ever come out. I hope he falls on a cactus and pricks his, well, nose. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon, friends. It's been a pleasure to visit your cloud. You have a magnificent observation post. Come back whenever you wish, Raindrop. His name is Raindrop. That is right. Uh, Raindrop. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, friends. I'm going to take part in my first rainfall. See you. We'll see you in the clouds. <laughs> Bye, friends. Come back whenever you want. What rotten luck. Why me? I wanted to pollute, but not in a trash can. Dude is marvelous. I really love it. But this place stinks more than I can have ever imagined. Damn! How could I be so unlucky? This could only happen to me. Hell, get me out of here! With so much dirt, even I can catch a disease. I've decided to jump with you. Where will we drop? That you never know. It depends on the wind. If it's very strong, it can carry us miles and miles, maybe even to Hawaii. But today it's not blowing very hard, so we'll drop vertically, right down there. Before we jump, I'd like to admire the scenery. I hope it's a nice spot. Gosh, a lower cloud has gotten in the way and I can't see anything. That happens to us very often. We call it blind jump. It's great fun! We jump from one cloud to another! And then, after we cross the second cloud, we can see the ground. It's a very exciting moment. I'm jumping off now. Bye, girls. See you. I'm coming with you. And me. And me. Well, well, I kind of like this rainy business. The drops of water surely must get to see the most beautiful scenery. Rain is good for the land. Without it, everywhere there would be desert. But if we want clean and pure rain, us humans must pollute the clouds because they always give us back what we send up to them. So learn this lesson well. <laughs> Careful with smoke and pollution. <laughs>